everybody here's my mama and my papa here and they're gonna be preaching god's true word for y'all today but uh, we love y'all and god bless y'all and we'll let them take it from here yeah god bless y'all you know god is good and he does take care of us though doesn't he so uh, we're gonna be doing god's true word today and uh we're gonna be praying for uh people in the book here everyone that sends us uh a uh, request for prayer. We put it in here, and we pray over them, you know. I ask you to remember uh, a lady in church who lost her only son today, and uh, or yesterday, she <laughs> lost him. But uh, just hold her up in prayer. She really needs prayer, you know. And it's hard losing a son. You know, me and Milton lost one about two years ago. Two years ago, yeah, two years two ago. Two years ago, we lost our son. And he was our oldest, you know, and our firstborn. So, uh it's hard when you lose your children, you know. To me, it seems like we should be the ones going instead of our children. We should go before our children go, but sometimes it don't work out that way, does it? But uh, God knows. I just thank God that uh, he gave his heart to the Lord uh, before he uh, uh, died. He had his mind made up. They were going to serve the Lord, and the Lord took him the next day. The Lord knows best, you know. We don't know about everything, but I, I feel like the Lord knew that he needed a take him on or he'd be back in a mess that he didn't need to be in you know because God takes care of his children you know and if the parents are praying for their children uh, I think God gives the children a chance to repent because of the praying parents you know but uh, we'll be praying right now I'll let Milton pray for all these uh, prayers in here all the requests that y'all see in these people having surgery and uh, financial problems and uh their children needs prayer for some of their children you know it's just everything going on but you know one thing about it god can take care of it all amen prayer changes things as milton says all the time amen there's power in prayer yeah and uh, uh, all things work together for good to them that love the lord yeah you know if you love the lord you know god works everything for your good that's right you need to claim that it's uh, romans 8 and 28 <clears throat> All things work for our good if we love the Lord. That's right. Hallelujah. According to his purpose. Yeah. Father, ask you, Lord, to answer these Amen. requests. Amen. Every one of them, Lord, ain't nothing too big for you or too small or too far away. You know, That's you right. are you're all everything. You ever whore. Lord, ask you, God, to reach out and touch everybody that's in, that requested prayer and heal them, Lord, answer their prayers. And I ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God is good. You know, uh, Richard Amen. and Sandy can't be with us today. Uh, hold Richard up in prayer, too. Well, Sandy, too, she's having problems with the wrist. But uh, uh, Richard told me that he was uh, went and took some kind of test or something and said he was hurting all through his body and everything. So and he said they didn't think they could make it. So they didn't make it today. So hold them up in prayer, too, you know. We all need prayer, you know, because yes, God is get, getting ready to come back, and we need to hold on to God, don't we? Yeah, God wants us to get close to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah we need to draw close to him. Well, I'm going to be in Joshua, the first chapter, talking about God giving Joshua the charge to take the people over into the promised land after Moses died. So uh, I'm going to read the heading on chapter 1. It says, that Entering the promised land... Uh, after wandering for 40 years in the wilderness, a new generation is ready to enter Canaan. But first, God prepares Joshua and the nation by teaching them the importance of courageous, courageous and consistent faith. The nation then miraculously crossed the Jordan River to begin the long-awaited conquest of the Promised Land. Like Joshua, we too need faith to begin and grow in the Christian life. That's what we need to do. We, yeah. we need to grow in the Lord and get close to him. And that's what Joshua done. And uh, it says, uh, Joshua leads the nation. The Lord's charge to Joshua, chapter 1. It says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, Thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon, 
that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, of all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. That's because God was with him. Amen. As I was with Moses, that's why he said, as I was with Moses, he'll be with Joshua. So I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. See, he told him that twice, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper, whithersoever thou goest, and that uh, you will prosper. God will have you to proper, prosper, you know. That's like Milton. He always kept a good job, didn't you? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah God, yep. He yeah, always had, had a good paying job. Yep. Yeah. God will take care of you. It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. See, we're to meditate on God's word. It says it in here. This is in the Old Testament. So it's all through the Bible. We're, we're to meditate day and night upon God's word. It says, thou, That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make the way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Uh, have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. See, there it is again. We, uh, be not afraid. See, we, we don't need to be afraid. We have God on our side, so we need not be afraid of anything that the devil may throw at us, you know. We need to realize that and don't doubt it, you know. Amen. It says, Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Wherever we go, whatever we do, God is with us, just like he was with the people in, uh, in the Bible time, you know. It says, uh, Joshua's charge to the Israelites. Uh, then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare ye vittles, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. Uh, and to the Reubenites and to the Gadites and to half the tribe of Manasseh spoke Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest and hath given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren armed all the mighty men of value and help them. And to the Lord have given your brother rest as he hath given you and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then you shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side Jordan towards the sunrising. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us, we will do. And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go, according as we hearken unto Moses in all things. So will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee, as he was with Moses. Whosoever he be that doeth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto thy words, in all that thou command him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. Amen. How many times did he say that? Four or five times in, in, one, in one chapter he said that, you know. Be strong and of good courage, because God is always with you, you know. Amen. And he'll right. take care of you. Now I'm going to read the commentary on that. So it says, As the book of Joshua opens, the Israelites are camped along the east bank of the Jordan River at the very edge of the promised land. And they are completing the mourning period for Moses. Moses had died, so they, they're completing the mourning period for him. Who has just died? The Israelites had an opportunity to enter the promised land 39 years earlier after spending a year at Mount Sinai and receiving God's law, but they failed to trust God to give them victory. We have to trust God in everything, you know. If he tells us to do something, we need to trust him to know he's going to be with us and it's all going to work out, you know. 
So it says, as a result, God did not allow them to enter the land, but made them wander in the wilderness until that disobedient generation had all died. During their wilderness wanderings, the Israelites obeyed God's laws. They also taught the new generation to obey God's laws. See, we're supposed to teach our children, too, to obey God's laws and do what's right. So, so they don't always listen, though, do they? But God said that they, they'll, how does it say that about if they it won't depart from them, the children? Go down to the third and fourth generation, is that what you're talking no, about? No, I was talking about where, uh, you know, uh, thank you, Margaret. Uh, it, you, you teach your children about God, and they might not uh, follow you know God's way now, but later on down the road they will come back to God. Yeah, I forget how God says it, but it's in the Word. Yeah, it says uh, they also taught the new generation to obey God's law so that they might enter the promised land, which was also called Canaan. As the children grew, they were often reminded that faith and obedience to God brought victory, while unbelief and disobedience brought tragedy. When the last of the older generation had died and the new generation had become adults, the Israelites prepared to claim their long-awaited promised land. See, it pays you to obey God. It says, uh, Joshua succeeded Moses as Israel's leader. What qualifications did he have to become the leader of a nation? One, God appointed him. And that's in Numbers 27, 18, and 23. Two, he was one of only two living adults who had witnessed the Egyptian plagues uh, and the exodus from Egypt. Uh, and three, he had been Moses' personal aide for 40 years. Uh, and four of the 12 leaders sent to scout out the promised land, only he and Caleb showed complete confidence that God would help them conquer. Mm -hmm. See, uh, uh, they knew that they could conquer. The, it was the giants is what was in the promised land. But all the rest of the uh, ones that went out spying out the land, they was afraid of the giants. So that's the reason they had to wander because they could have went right then and there and took the land. But that, but they was afraid and they didn't go. You know, they disobeyed yeah. God. God told them to go, but they wouldn't go. They was afraid. So they had to wander for 40 years, wasn't it? Yeah. So Pedro to obey God. Of the 12 leaders sent to scout out the promised land only he and Caleb showed complete confidence that God would help them conquer it and that's in Numbers 13 through 14 it says because Joshua had assisted Moses for many years he was well prepared to take over the leadership of the nation changes in leadership are common in many organizations at such times a smooth transition is essential for the successful establishment of the new administration. This doesn't happen unless new leaders are trained. If you are currently in a leadership position, begin mentoring someone who will be able to take your place. Then when you leave or are pronounced or promoted, operations can continue to run effectively. If you, as, if you aspire to be a leader, learn from others so that you will be prepared when the opportunity comes. Um, it says Joshua's new job consisted of leading more than two million people into a strange new land and conquering it. What a challenge. Even for a person of Joshua's caliber, every new job is a challenge. Without God, this experience can be frightening. With God, it can be a great adventure. Just as God was with Joshua, he is with us as we face our new challenges. Um, we may not conquer nations, but every day we face tough situations, setbacks, difficult people, and temptations. Uh, God's promise, however, that he will never abandon us or fail to help us. See, it says right in, in he, won't, he won't fail to help us in any situation that we may be in. We, he can walk, walk through it with us, you know, and he'll take care of us as we go through it. When we ask God to direct us, we can be confident that he will walk with us through all of life's challenges. Ain't that something? Amen. You've got somebody to lean upon. Yes. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can know you can never fail if you're walking with him. Amen. Many people think that prosperity and success come from having power, influencing personal contacts, and a relentless desire to get ahead. But the strategy for 
gaining prosperity that God taught Joshua goes against such criteria. He said that in order to succeed, Joshua must be strong and courageous because the task ahead would, would not be easy. He had to obey God's laws and completely read and constantly read and study the book of the law. And that's what we have to do. We have to study this book here. If we don't study this book and do what this book says, the devil can trick us at anything. Yeah. You know, and we sure don't want the devil tricking us. So it says God's word to be successful. Follow God's words to words to Joshua. You may not succeed by the world standards, but you will Lord be a success you. in God's eyes. Lord and he you. and his opinion and rewards are more important than anything he, the world can offer, more than anything that the world could offer. How strange it sounds today to equal success with obedience, and for many success means controlling others. For Joshua, it meant being controlled by God, and that's Amen. what we want, not the world, not the people in it, but God. It says, God told Joshua that to succeed, he must obey the rules for living found in God's laws. Often we can't see what the results of future benefits of Father God will be when we are not certain what to do. Obedience to what God has revealed in the scriptures, that's what I just told you, is the only sure step we can take. Resolve to set aside time each day to read and think about God's word. Remind yourself of God's words day and night. Act today on what you know God has said, and he will assure you success in carrying out his purpose. And during the previous year, the tribes of Reuben and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh had asked Moses if they could settle just east of the Promised Land. The area offered excellent uh, pasture land for their large flocks. Uh, Moses agreed to give them the land on one condition, that they help their follower, uh, follower tribes enter and conquer the Promised Land. Amen. Only after the land had been conquered could they return to their homes. Now the time had come for these three tribes to live up to their end of the agreement. When others have helped us achieve our goals, we should also try to help them achieve theirs. Uh, yes. Stop and think about the goals you have achieved and Amen. any successes you are enjoying. Who helped you along the way? Have you done all you can to help them as they have helped you? You know, I know here... Uh, a couple of years back, uh, God reminded me of my uh, Sunday school teacher. When I was a real little girl, when there was a one-room church, and uh, uh, the teacher would take us outside, and she would give us these cards and things, you know. And that's how I learned about the Lord, you know, was going to that little tiny Sunday school and uh, going outside and her uh, having these little cards, and she passed them out to us and gave them to us and uh, told us we could keep them. Every Sunday we had a card. And I would put them cards on my uh, wall and I would read them every night when I go to bed, you know. That was God, that was her planting uh, seeds in my heart, you know, and God planting them in there. And uh, so I, I had to go to her and tell her, and I was thankful that it was because of her that I become a Christian, you know. So, because she taught me of God's love and all the stories in the Bible, you know. God is good, and he will send people by your way to help you along the way, to, to learn of God and to trust in him. It says, um, if anyone had tried to conquer the promised land their own way, chaos would have resulted in order to complete the enormous task of, co of conquering the land. Everyone had to agree to the la uh, leader's plan and be willing to support and obey him. If we are going to complete the task God has given us, we must fully agree to his plan. Pledge ourselves to obey it and work together with others to put his principles into action. Agreeing to God's plan means both knowing what the plan is as found in the Bible and carrying it out daily. When God commissioned Joshua after Moses' death, he told him three times to be strong and courageous. Here, Joshua is given the same kind of encouragement from the people. Apparently, he took God's message to heart, and he found the strength and courage he needed in his relationship with God. 
to the next time you are afraid to do what you know God is calling Thank you to you, do, Lord. remember that strength and courage are readily available from him. God will give you the courage and the strength to do whatever work he calls you to do. So just rely on him. That's all I have. You had a good? It's good. All God's word is good. Yes. <laughs> all his word is yeah, good. Amen. Yeah, I really like that. You know, how God can be with you through any situation you go through. He will give you courage and strength to do whatever task he has to do. He's right you. there. He's right there. And, and when you're down, you're really in trouble. That's right. You really are. That's what happened to them. Yeah. After all that God done, all the miracles he's worked and, and, and done, and then they went in it came to land and they uh, they was afraid they was afraid after god told them they could conquer the land all they had to do just go on so they all had to die off and another generation went into the con uh, into the promised land with uh, caleb and joshua they were the only two adults that got to go in yeah so yep sure enough good story yeah i'm gonna read a little bit in romans <clears throat> god's good i'm gonna read a little bit about the old flesh getting us in trouble you know, if we have mind the, the things of the flesh, we, we, we're messing up. Mm -hmm. I will, uh, this whole chapter is good. I encourage y'all to read the whole thing. Chapter 8, Romans 8. But I'm going to start at verse 6. <clears throat> and uh, says, To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You know, if you're in the flesh, you can't please God. That's right. Amen. If you, you got to let the carnal mind the re, the, uh, leading you, you're not going to please That's God. That's right. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Yeah. Praise God. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead. You know, when we repented of our sins, this old man died. Yeah. And the brand new man come alive. That's right. And Satan spends the uh, rest of your life trying to, to kill the new, brand new man. Yeah. And bring the old man back. He wants to raise the old man back. But it's up to us to have a made up mind to keep yeah. the old man dead. Keep him right. under our feet. And and Satan, he, he don't quit. Uh, it's an everyday but, job, uh, yeah, challenge. Yeah. But he wants to, to destroy us, but he can't do it. it. But we can let him, and he can, if we let him. Yeah. Said, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Mm -hmm. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye, ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. But if we keep this old body in line and mind in line and the old flesh under our feet yeah and uh, seek spiritual things seek to please god well you know we're just going to be blessed and go on and go on i'm going to skip over here to the uh, i read down to the the 14th first i'm going to skip over to the 26th first now all this is good it's all every bit of it is good i can't yeah. want y'all to read it, it says Likewise, the Spirit also help up our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Yeah. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. But that's, that's speaking in, in, in the tongue, speaking yeah. in the Holy Ghost when you pray. And, and God knows what we need yeah. and how we should pray and how we should bind the devil. And if... Uh, you know, the Lord starts start speaking to you, you need to, and you hear it, you'll stop it. You, but we're not supposed to do that. Yeah. Let, let it go on. I said, ain't you speaking? That's, that's the Holy Ghost speaking. That's right. 
and hit a hit of mind the devil and put him on the run. <clears throat> you know, we need to, uh, like Paul said, you know, he spoke more in tongues than, than everybody and he encouraged everybody to speak in tongues, but uh, to speak with a language that we can understand but will build the church up and help the church also. Yeah. But, you know, when you're praying, we need to seek and please God. And especially when you're up there praying for somebody, you don't know what their needs are, but God knows. And if someone's speaking and uh, praying over them and speaking in tongues, it's God praying for them, yeah. you know, giving them strength. We don't know uh, what their need is, but God does, and he's praying over them. That's right. To meet the need, yeah. And he that searcheth the hearts between knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. But now one thing, you know, you give your heart to God and things go wrong, you need to quote this scripture right here. Mm -hmm. It's Romans 8 and 28. That we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according called according to his purpose. You know, God is so awesome and God is so good. And and, and he does. He, he, but a lot of people, you know, like our son, he repented and then came home that night. And the next morning he got up and got him a big plate of food. And then when, when Jackie was gone, getting wood, we come in and Jackie went in there and come back out said, Delbert's laying in here on the floor. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we don't know how long he'd been laying there. You know, I'd run in there and turn him over, and he, he had throwed up, had puke all up his nose and his eyes and ears and hair. And, uh, and I, I cleaned him off and started CPR, but he, we never did get him back. The ambulance department came and worked with him. But he repented that night. He, he, you know, he, he gave his heart to God. God knows. You know, he knows whether we can make it or not. Mm -hmm. And he knows what's down the road. And he also works all things for our good. He works all things for your good. And we had prayed and prayed and prayed for him to, yeah. you know, to come to the Lord. You know, so. Yeah, and when we least expect it, yeah. he did. He did, yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's the way God works. Yeah. All things work for the good to them who love the Lord. And, you know, if you're going through trouble or had something horrible to happen and you love the Lord, you serving God, well, God's going to turn it around yeah. and work it for your good. That's right. Praise Amen. God. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you're going through troubles and you're serving God and you love the Lord, you can quote this scripture. It applies to you. Yeah. For, who, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that we might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. And here we go. And, and what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. If God is for you, Ain't nothing can be nothing. against you. No. It might want to be, but it can't. That's right. Praise God. It says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay any char anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Praise God, praise God. But God is so good. Right. And I'll read on down here. The 35th says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecutions or famines or nakedness or peril or sword? Ain't nothing can separate us from the love of God. Right. Nothing. Amen. Ain't nothing. Praise God. He's all, he's all everything. Mm -hmm. and ain't nothing can separate us from him. Right. But we can do it ourselves. If yeah. we uh, start living after the flesh and lusting after things of the world, you know, we draw from God. Yeah. We're stepping back from God. He ain't stepping back from us. Yeah. 
you know, if you get slack in the word or slack going to church or slack praying and stuff, you'll eventually, you'll, you'll get slack and slack and slack until you eventually backslide. Yeah. You know, you got to stay constantly in the word yeah. you know, and talking to God. Pray and repent and seek God. Keep the old, the old flesh, lust of the flesh killed yeah. and the spirit man alive. Yeah. That's right. Praise God. Love y'all. Thank God for tuning in. Pray we said something to encourage you and help you. And uh, read uh, Romans 8 and the whole chapter. You enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. God bless you. Yeah. God bless you. We're through, Corey. But, uh, you know, God is good and he does take care of his children. No matter what kind of situation we get in, he's there. Yeah. Sometimes we doubt ourselves. You know, here just last week, you know, I was learning, you know, I was taking stuff uh, hard, at, you know, not not realizing that God can take care of any situation. Yeah. You know, why should I doubt? After all that he's done for me and took care of me and turned things around for us all through our life, has never since we've been, been together. Yeah. God has uh, worked for us, you know, and took yeah. care of us. In bad situations, God took care of us. You know, so uh, why do you doubt that God won't take care of this situation, whatever it may be. You know, so don't doubt. God loves you and he'll take care of you. That's right. And we don't fear the giants coming. That ain't nothing. Yeah, that ain't we, nothing. We can tromp them under our feet. And shame on me for doubting. I, I didn't really doubt. I knew God could do it, but, you know, but I said, I asked God to forgive me. That's what you do. When you mess up, you ask God to forgive yeah. you. And, and I, met, I messed up for doubting because I knew without a shadow of a doubt that God could do anything, you know. But I let that doubt slip in there, and I had to apologize to God. I had to ask him to forgive me for doubting him, you know. Amen. So, God is good, and he will forgive you. That's right. You know, if you ask, he will forgive you. If you have any prayer requests, please send them or put them online or whatever. Yeah, and let in us the know. Comments. There's power in prayer. That's right. And, uh, and the old devil wants you to think when you're praying, it ain't going no more. It ain't doing nothing. But that's a lie from Satan. That's right. When you're praying, mountains are being moved, storms are being calmed in, in people's lives. Yeah. Uh, we have power in Jesus and in prayer. Yeah. Amen. But just Amen. hold on to God. We love y'all. Well, that, I guess that's all for this one. We love y'all. God bless y'all. And we'll see y'all in the next one. Amen. When is the next one? Next Monday. So right. We'll see y'all next Monday. It'll be a live stream on this channel. It's called God's True Word. Yeah, Lord's willing. Right. God bless y'all.